Welcome to the Post Glover YouTube video series. Today we will demonstrate how to mount and connect a Post Glover dynamic braking resistor. This instructional video is generic for all of our dynamic braking resistors from 200 watts to 100 kilowatts. First, take off the cover by removing the cover screws. After you remove the cover, you will see mounting holes in the bottom of the enclosure. You can get the actual mounting dimensions by contacting Post Glover if you would like them. There will be installation instructions sent with the dynamic braking resistor that has simple diagrams showing the orientation of how to install the enclosure. The resistor should be mounted either flat on a horizontal surface or if it is mounted on a wall, you need to make sure that the elements are horizontal and there are vents at the top of the enclosure so that the heat of the resistor can escape from the enclosure. This will maximize cooling and ensure air movement across the resistor elements. If the solid barrier wall of the enclosure is at the top, then the heat will be trapped in the enclosure and cause the resistor to overheat, which could unnecessarily open the thermal switch and or shorten the life of the resistor. Mount your resistor to a suitable surface. The enclosure and surrounding area may get hot so make sure you do not mount your resistor to a combustible surface or under a cable tray or something that you don't want to get too hot. Every Post Glover dynamic braking resistor comes standard with a terminal block and a thermal switch, unless you specifically ask for either to not be there. There are multiple appropriately sized knockouts to bring your wires to and from your variable frequency drive to the terminal block and the thermal switch. Note that the terminal block and thermal switch have no polarity associated with them, so you don't have to worry about wiring them backwards. For the terminal block, simply insert the stripped end of the wire into the screw terminal and tighten. The thermal switch is typically a normally closed switch that will open if the temperature gets too hot. This is usually wired to the enable circuit of your drive if you want to utilize this function. For the normally closed thermal switch, the connections are a crimped spade connection. So you can simply crimp the stripped wire into the ferrule using the correct crimping tool. Remember to pull on the wires to ensure they are tightly crimped afterward. After all the wires are hooked up, fasten the top back on the enclosure and your dynamic braking resistor should be ready for use. The installation for our larger style dynamic braking resistors is essentially the same with a few variations. The cover to remove before installation is the front cover. And instead of knockouts, there's a conduit hub at the bottom of the enclosure to pull your wires through. And since these designs are more watts, the wires will be larger, so there's a terminal landing pad with a two-hole NEMA pattern instead of a small terminal block. Also, the thermal switch is conveniently wired to a terminal block at the bottom of the enclosure. There is an additional video dedicated to the installation of this larger style dynamic braking resistor if you would like to view it. Again, if you have any questions, please contact us by email at sales at postglover.com or give us a call at 859-283-0778.